Hi, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and today we're going to play around with uh, a continuation, a uh, second part of a video I made just the other day about making stickers with your own art. And if you haven't seen that video yet, uh, just go back into my uh, uploads list and you'll find that one. Um, so I'm going to carry on with that. In the last one, we used digital uh, art on stickers, we used um, oxide inks, and we used. Um, What's the other thing we used? A mental block here. Oh yeah, jelly plate printing. So today I thought I'd extend it and use some other materials um, that I really haven't used a lot lately. So I've got out my Sharpie markers and along with that I've got my toy that I have had for quite a while. This is called an e-brush. It's an airbrush um, but it holds markers. Um, so we'll play with that and see what happens. Um, we're going to play with some spray inks. I've got out my Delusions, and that's going to make a mess for sure. I've got out the uh, Dina Wakely Media Scribble Sticks as well. These are water soluble, but they are not a crayon. They are, um, well, she says they're not a crayon because there isn't any wax in them. So we'll have a little fun with those. I've also got out my brushos, and I've got out my Tim Holtz, I'm just looking for them here. Um, Distress crayons, go and play with those too. And maybe we'll do a little rubber stamping on top of things. And then I have another really wild idea, which I'm not going to share with you right now, but because it may not work at all, but near the end, I'm going to do that as well. So we're going to get started here in just a minute. I want to clear, clean off my desk. You see, I've got some paper laid down because, especially with these spray inks, things are going to get a little messy. Um, and we'll get on with this. I thought I'd show you too how I prepare my hands before I do this. Um, I wear gloves when I do acrylic pouring, but um, when I'm doing this kind of stuff, I don't like wearing the gloves because you know you have to have a little bit more control and grip on some of the things you're using. So I have just applied some of this material, which is called Invisible Glove. Um, I got it on Amazon and it works really well. And it's just like a moisturizing cream. Um, and you just wipe it all over your hands and your fingers wipe it in and it will protect your hands from the ink. Now you're still going to get inky of course but it makes uh, cleanup a lot easier. So I'm just applying this now. And what I'm going to do next and I'm sorry if you can hear in the background but my printer is working today and I'm printing out some more of the digital stickers which I show in the first video. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about go to that. I went through my stash of stickers and I have a whole pile of stickers. Um, I think at one time there was big sales on or something, uh, you know, in grab bins at Staples or other places. And I just picked them up thinking they'd be great in the future. Well, a lot of these I don't use because they're ones for diskettes, which no one uses diskettes anymore, or for CD, CD labeling. And look at here. Here is a blast from the past. I don't know how many years I've had these. Probably 20 or longer. Um, these are labels meant for, because there's the holes in the side, for the old dot matrix printers. If you remember those, and they had the little uh, coils on the end of the roller with the sprockets, and that's what pulled them through. So I've got a whole pile of these. So I think I'm going to use those as well. Now you can see I'm not really concerned about the size of the labels. So all I'm going to do is, I'm going to do something like we do with paste papers or collage papers. I'm just going to lay some things down on my sheet here and uh, we're just going to build layers with all of this so get this more into the shot here okay just slide that over a bit so you can see and um, since I'm going to be using the delusion sprays at first these are extremely messy they're great color brilliancy but they are messy and they go everywhere and you can't direct them so I'm just going to pause the video for a second because I need to get some paper towels to cover up my computer. Okay, I'm back. I've got my area all prepared here. So we're just going to give these a bit of a spritz. And I'm really not worried about the color combinations. And as I said, I'm doing this in layers. So I'm not looking for full cover coverage. So I'm starting with Delusions inks. And I think this is Lemon Zest. And that's enough lemon zest. And then I've got, what's this one? Funky fuchsia. Let's do a little funky fuchsia. 
And then we've got a little pure sunshine, it's called, which is kind of an orangey. And you see, told you how this stuff, you just can't control it, it just gets on everything. And a little London blue. Okay. So I'm just going to hit this with my heat dryer for a bit. Now, as I mentioned in the first video when I was doing these, get some cord out here. Um, your paper will warp a little bit, but as it dries, it will flatten back out. Okay, they're not totally dry at the moment, but I'm going to set these aside to dry a little bit more. And I'm going to grab some more labels and basically do the same thing. But now I'm going to use these ones I was talking about that I've had for years. Make sure you get the right sides up. Take a couple of sheets of those. And then I've got some of these which are a little different style and let's see there's some under here I think that are a little different type there's one that's got my brother-in-law's name on it I don't know why must have been something I was making years ago okay so I've got those there same thing, um, maybe I'll use some different colors. Let's see, I'm just grabbing some colors at random. Some bluey greens, and this is one that's never been opened. So let's take this off. I know you can't see what I'm doing because I'm doing it off camera, but I'm just peeling off this you know, they, they really seal these well, too well actually, because they're a bit of a pain to try and get the protective plastic coating on them off. As you can see, I'm still working at it. Okay, got it off. Give it a shake. And uh, let's just see what we get. pretty green. What green was that? That was called Polished Jade. I don't think I've ever used the Polished Jade before. I have never opened it. This is uh, Calypso Teal. And I'm not worried that it's blotting up. That adds texture. And then this one is Dirty Martini. And Dirty Martini doesn't seem to want to come out of the bottle. And this happens sometimes with these inks. So, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to flick it. Told you this was, ooh, that's a big flick. Okay. To the rescue. Just muck it about. Because we remember, what we're creating here are labels so they're going to be smaller pieces we're going to tear some of them when we put them on whatever we put them on i'm intending to actually use a bunch of these to cover uh, a journal cover okay i wonder if i can get it to squirt oh there we go okay just needed a little incentive okay that's all i'm going to do with these ones and again hit them with the heat dryer now i'm going to this these are going to be my base coats for all the the pile of tags i've got out here so rather than make this video three days long i am just going to cut it off here i'm going to spray my other sheets with some other colors get them dry and then i'll come back and i'll show you what i'm going to put on them for the next layer Okay, so my first layer is done on all of my labels here. 
I just sprayed all kinds of random colors. I wasn't being very picky about my color combinations all over the labels. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add another label, uh, lab label, I mean another level to these sheets. Now these are still a little bit on the damp side and it's one reason why they're curling a little bit, but I'm not going to let that worry me for this next, uh, well basically this next one is sort of an experiment, but I don't think we can make any mistakes with these because as I said, they're going to be pulled apart into little pieces and I'm going to do a third video showing you how I'm going to use them just as an example. But back to case at hand. Um, oh, and just as an aside, I have used baby wipes to like mop up uh, puddles. Don't throw away the baby wipes. The baby wipes will be covered in color. Let them dry. Take an iron and press them and uh, dry iron, press them, and you've got elements that you can use in collage work or on art journal pages or background on cards. I've done this many times. You can even sew on these as well. So I think I will put this one aside and let it dry. And I'll have new ones here. So the next product I'm going to use is something called brushos. If you don't know what brushos are, they are basically powdered pigment that react to water. You need very little of these. The colors are very brilliant. And when water hits them, they spread out and do wonderful things. And it looks really cool. Now, the one thing I'm concerned about, though, is I already have a layer of ink from the delusions on these labels. So I'm not sure how well these are going to react. But nothing ventured, nothing gained. So I'm going to take some of my brushes, sprinkle them on here, and then I'm going to hit them with the water and see what happens. And again, I'm just picking colors at random. And the thing about brushos that's interesting too is brushos tend to be a couple of different colors in the package, which you're not really sure what you're going to get. They're predominantly the color, like I put a little swatch on the top of here, predominantly that color, but there are a couple of other colors mixed in with them. Now, I've got some on here and you can't see it, but let's spritz it. You see, they're starting to First, which is kind of cool. Um, see if I can put a little bit more on this one. Now, of course, the dilutions are also water soluble. They do not dry permanent. So, by rewetting this, I'm also getting the dilutions wet again too, and the thing and the colors will run into each other. So again, we're going to give it just a couple of seconds with the heat dry, and. I'll just show you here what I meant by taking a baby wipe to mop up things. If things are a little too wet as you dry, just... And what happens is, this will start to move your color around a little bit too. So, it's like you're stamping color. Of course, you're getting all that color onto the baby wipe. And as I said before, you want to hang on to those, dry them, and you can use them. And I'm sure somewhere along the line, I do have a video in my library uh, that you can refer to and see how I've used baby wipes. Escapes me right now what I might have called that one some time ago. But see, look at the texture we're getting with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, now this is my second layer, I'm going to go back to all of my labels and I'm just going to apply some brushes the same way as I just did here and set these aside to dry and then I'll come back and we'll do the next layer. Okay, so now for the third layer I'm going to use uh, Sharpie markers but what I'm going to do is I might doodle on some of these really quick but I'm also going to use my little e-brush machine. And what this is is an airbrush machine that you can put a Sharpie into and it has holders for other pens as well. And it doesn't work too badly. It will make a noise, you'll hear it on here, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take on these ones and spray a couple of different colors and see what uh, happens. So let's make sure all of these are in frame so you can see what I'm doing. Push those up just a little bit more. Get these ones in the bottom. I'm just doing them on mass. And I'm going to start this and see what happens. Sometimes you have to adjust your 
marker, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't with certain markers. Okay, that one doesn't look like it's happening. Let's try the orange. That's a little better. There we go. I don't know if you can see this on camera because it's a very fine spray. Now, I don't know. My Sharpies have been laying around for a while, so they might be a little dried up. So let's see if I can get a, another color. Let's get something vibrant. How about a hot pink? We'll try a hot pink and see what we get from that. I'm getting a little bit more out of that. So you can see it's a very fine misting. Dries pretty much instantly. So I really don't have any plan here. I'm just seeing if I can get a little bit more color. If I hold it in one spot a little bit more, you see I'll get a little bit more. So essentially I'm just doodling with the markers through an airbrush. It is not an expensive tool in terms of airbrushes, as airbrushes go, because with airbrushes and all the things you can get with them can run you many hundreds of dollars. This was, I think at the time, I think I paid just under $100 for it. And then the adapters for the pens cost, I don't know, maybe $20 a piece or $15 a piece, something like that not an easy thing to get now though so I've had it for a while so I don't know if they've stopped manufacturing it or what the story is okay these are pretty light I'm going to put a little black on them see what happens with that Okay, now the other thing that I can do is I could do a little wild doodling. So let's pick another color. Again, I'm not being very picky. And I don't know, uh, maybe some squiggle lines. I'm really not trying to draw anything in particular. Again, remember, these things are going to be all torn up and stuck down. So. I'm not particularly worried about making these into works of art. They will become works of art when I stick them all down to whatever. And maybe add one more color. Let's try a darker yellow. Yellow's not really showing up as well, of course, because it's lighter. So you see, I really don't care where this is going. I'm just scribbling, and just scribbling is kind of fun. And let's add another color. How about, how about a dark purpley color? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest of the pile I have here. I don't know if I'm going to do this, the Sharpie, on every one of them. Uh, some of them already have a lot of color on them. I don't think they need any more. But I'm going to pick up a few more and do those, and then I'll be back to talk about the next layer. Okay, so what's next? Well, on this next layer, and I think I'm at layer number four, um, I'm going to add some of these. Now, these I bought a long time ago, and I've hardly ever used them. They're water-soluble oil pastels. 
And I am thinking that right now, these sheets are getting a little busy, getting a little dark. There is a white oil pastel in here, water soluble. So I'm gonna get that and I'm gonna grab a water brush. I think I've got one that's full. This one looks like it will probably work. Yep. And um, I'm gonna see if I can just add some highlights here on, on this. So I'm just gonna color in a couple of spots and then get out my water brush and see what happens with this. Now, of course, the stuff I have underneath this is also water soluble. So the colors are going to mix. And you want to know something? I don't think this is working very well. I don't really like what's happening with this. It's just getting blended into the background and not doing a whole heck of a lot. So I think we'll forget about using the oil pastels. That was a bit of, a, of an experiment. But I have Dina Wakeley's Scribble Sticks. And I believe she has a white in here. So, and instead of just scribbling, maybe I'll just draw some circles. I'm going to try it on a different one. Just some little scribbly circles on this. See that I have to press a little harder to really get these to show up. So I've got some circles on here. Now I'll try the water brush again. And that's not doing a lot. But I'm adding some texture, so Again, I'm using a lot of water-soluble products on top of water-soluble products. So you are going to get a little different thing. So maybe I should try using maybe this blue. Maybe some on this one. Oops. And I've got another one over here. I'm going to show up pretty well on this one. And again, we'll hit them with the water brush, see what we get. Not a lot, but I'm not worried about it because, again, these are going to be used in pieces. So you'll never see the entire thing. Okay. Not really working all that well either. So let's try Tim Holtz's Distress Crayons. Now I think I'll grab some different ones here. Now these ones have curled a little bit on me. I'll make a I'll make a confession. When I'm off camera, I've been taking these and I put them through my laminator on the highest heat setting between in one of the carriers and this flattens them out. You could do the same thing with a dry iron at on the highest uh, setting and put it between two pieces of parchment paper. Okay, what do we got in the stress crayons that we can use? Ooh. That's pretty. Now, the Distress Crayons are water reactive. So, ooh, ooh, very creamy. Very creamy. As opposed to the Scribble Sticks. Okay, let's see what happens when I add a little water to these. Oh yeah, we getting some, we're getting some color here. Now the other thing about the distress crayons, the way that they work, is that 
they'll move a little bit with the water from a brush, but they move even more so, or should, with your fingers. So maybe we'll just get this a little wet here, and we'll do a little finger painting. So you can still see sort of the shapes, but I'm sort of bleeding them out. That's kind of fun. Okay, how about this one? Let's use a different color. Let's try a blue. And let's just squiggle this all over the paper. And Okay, and do we have, yes we do, we have, oh no, that's not really a white, that's a gray. There should be one in here called Picket Fence. And they might be my other box. Oops, what's this color? This color is antique linen. Hmm. Oh wait, there's is that that's the picket fence. Now the picket fence usually works a little bit differently than the other ones. There is a reason for that, and I'm not sure what that reason is. I don't remember, but let's see. Yeah, it really is not, doesn't show up that well. So why don't we try one of the other off-whites. What's this? This is, that's Tattered Rose. Don't want that. What's this one? Scattered Straw. Okay. Again, it's not really showing up all that well, but we'll just move it about. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few more of these uh, distress crayons to some of the other pieces here and there. I'm not going to do them all. I want some variety here, um, and then I'll come back. So I'm done uh, scribbling and using the different uh, water-soluble crayons and things like that, the distress uh, crayons, the scribble sticks, um, that kind of stuff. And now I think I need to add a little bit more texture to some of these. And the way I do that is I'm just getting out some scripty ink uh, pads, or not ink pads, but rubber stamps. And I'm going to use stays on ink because remember this is all, so far everything we've put on here, with the exception of the Sharpie markers, is pretty much a water soluble product. So I will talk a little later on about when you apply these to whatever you're going to apply them to, how to avoid making this into a brown mess, as because the these will reactivate with water or with a wet medium. But for now, we're going to do some stamping, and I've got a variety of colors of stays on ink, and I'm not that concerned about getting a perfect image. I'm just adding texture. And I'm just going to randomly place my stamps down. Now this one's not showing up all that well, but that's okay. I'm still getting the texture in the background. And again, remember, we're not using these as whole pieces. They will be small pieces. Um, maybe I'll switch colors on this one. I don't know what this is. This is cactus green. We'll try that. And I'm going to do this on the majority of my pages. And I'll mix it up with uh, another stamp. 
And this one I don't even have mounted on a block, and that's okay. I don't care. We're just trying to get a little texture. In fact, in some ways, it's probably a little easier to stamp without a block. And I'm going to do this to most of the other pieces, and then I'll show you uh, the result of this. Okay, so I'm finished with all the label sheets, but I'm not done yet. I'm not going to let anything go to waste in this project. So these pieces of paper here are the is the sheet that I had underneath um, all those other label sheets when I was uh, putting uh, ink on them and stamping and all of that. And this is what I was left with. I'm going to make these into self-sticking labels as well. But this was this was newsprint. Newsprint is very absorbent and very flimsy. So to give it a little bit more substantial weight, I'm going to spread some clear gesso on it. And I'm using the Finibar clear gesso because I have found out of all the gessos I've used before that are clear, this one's the smoothest. Um, gesso, if you don't know what it is, basically is uh, has is white paint with grounds in it. In this case, it'll dry clear in order that you can take other mediums and write or paint on top of it. It's kind of a primer, but this one will dry clear. So I'll keep all of this, and at the same time, um, it will give a little bit more uh, substance to the paper. Now, this of course is a wet medium. So the materials I have on here, most of these are wet as well. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time painting this on because I don't want to react or reactivate the inks and things that are on here. So I'm just getting it on oops, as quickly as I possibly can. And I'm not putting it on too heavy. It won't take long to dry. And my idea here is that after it is thoroughly dry, and I may do this on both sides, I'm going to run these sheets through my large Xyron. If you don't know what a Xyron is, a Xyron is actually a machine that has rolls of or has a roll of sticky tape on it, two-sided. And when you put anything through it, it makes whatever you've put through it basically into a sticker. They come in different sizes, and I have the different sizes, but for this project, because these sheets are relatively large, I'm going to put them through my large Xyron. But I can't do that until these are thoroughly dry. And as I said, they're not going to take that long, but I am probably going to do the front and the back side. And then what I think I'm going to do with these is once I have them on the sticker sheet, I'm going to run them through my die cutting machine and cut out various shapes and these will become stickers. Okay, so I'll come back and let you know how that works out. Now, remember those baby wipes that I used and I said once they get color on them, I'm not throwing them away, I'm going to reuse them. Well, I'm going to do the same thing to these because they're very limp. I've let them dry thoroughly and I put them through uh, my laminating machine to press them out. Could have done it with a hot iron. And I'm going to use clear gesso. Now, I did think about using fabric stiffener because I do have some of that. But I think I'll just try the gesso. And again, the reason I'm using the gesso is because it will give it some body and will allow me to um, write or put other mediums on top of this without reactivating what's already on here. And I will probably have to do the same thing to these as I will do with the um, scrap paper, the newsprint. I'll probably have to put a coat on each side once the one, one side is dry. Now, as I said, there are products. Um, I have one called Stiffy, which is a fabric stiffener, which basically does the same thing as gesso, except that um, I'm not sure if it'll wash out or not, but I'm not worried about that part because I'm not washing these, obviously.
and I may try to die cut these or I may just rip them up. Um, I'll put them through the Xyron machine like I'm going to do with the um, newsprint and essentially make my baby wipes into a sticker. So I've got another little experiment to try next. This one I'm not sure how it's going to work out so stay tuned for that. Okay so the uh, sheet that I was using uh, on the underside of uh, all my uh, label sheets I have now coated both sides with clear gesso just to give it a little bit more body and to protect uh, these water soluble inks that are on it. Um, and now I'm going to put it through my Xyron and make it into sticker material. And how do I do that? Well here is my Xyron. Now I can't get it all in the shot. I'll get as much in as I can. But this is what a Xyron looks like. It's This is the large one. You can get them in several other sizes that are a little bit smaller. But I'm using the large one. And basically it is loaded with a cartridge that will put um, sticky tape on one side that, and on the other side you'll be protected by a clear plastic sheet. So all you do is you just put that into the machine and you crank it through and there's a little cutter built into it and then you take off the sheet. Let me get this out of the way so you can see the sheet. So there, I've now got a sheet that has sticky on one side. Now, I'll peel off this top sheet that protects the top of the page that we've worked on. And what's underneath this piece of wax paper is the sticky part. But before I cut that off, I'm just going to trim it a little bit. Just trim this excess wax paper off. And you don't have to be exact about it. And remember, this was our garbage sheet. And all I did was cut it down into more manageable pieces and covered both sides with clear gesso and let it dry. Now, I can take this sheet, cut it down to a size that will fit into my die cutting machine. I could put, even probably put it into my Cricut or my Brother Scan and Cut or whatever electronic die cutting machine you have and cut out any shapes that I want. However, just for the sake of simplicity and demonstration, I'm going to show you three different punches that I used and I created so let me move this out of the way I created all of these now these are all stickers so when I want to use them I just peel off that wax paper at the back just like that and it becomes a sticker simple as that and that just gave me an idea for a background in a journal page hmm stickers on top of stickers that might work. So let me just show you how fairly easily this cuts. Now it's going to depend on the sharpness of your punches. But uh, we'll just take this one. This is the plague style. Just put it in. Punch it. There we go. And then when I'm ready to use it, I'll just peel off the wax paper and I've got a sticker. Let's try one in the circle punch. I'm just using some basic shapes here. You could use... Um, you could use whatever shapes you happen to have. And as I said, you could do it with your um, Cricut or your Big Shot or just some punches. There, another one. So really cool. So what I've done now is I've made what I would have probably thrown in the garbage into a sticker sheet. So, I did mention there was another little surprise I was going to try experiment. Well, I tried it. It did not work. But there's logic behind it. And I'm going to tell you what I tried to do. I got this idea that I could take a strip of these labels that we created and do a zigzag stitch in other colors of thread all over it and then pull it up and that would have texture on it and use it as a sticker. No, here's the reason why not. Because on the back of these, we have sticky piece of paper that has to come off. And in so doing, 
it basically wherever the stitch is it pulls apart from it now you might be able to leave a little bit of that on it but i don't think it's worth the effort really for the effect that you're going to get um with it so that's an experiment that i thought i'd surprise you with it didn't work no surprise okay so i now have all of my sticker sheets done so what am i going to do with them well, you'll have to come tune back in and see the next video in this series, which will be video number three, where I'm going to actually do the cover on a new journal that I have using all of these stickers. So we'll see you then. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.